Welcome back to the first ever WIFDIF Spirit of the Game conference. The title of this panel is Spirit Around the World. And I have three panelists with me uh, who are come to LECO from far, far afield, shall we say. I'll let them tell you where, but I'd like to welcome them to the stage. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Sharif Ibrahim, and I'm from New Zealand. Um, I play for the open team, Megan. Um, I've been playing for uh, 11 years. Um, and in terms of coaching experience, most recently I have coached the New Zealand under-23 women's team. Um, and until last season, I was on the board of the National Association, and I was there for five years. Hi, my name is Alicia, and I'm here from Beijing, playing with the cup team. Um, in Beijing, I'm co-captain of a team called Big Brother. I've been there for um, over five years, um, and currently I have organized our equivalent of China Nationals as well. I'm on the board of our um, Ultimate Association of China. Good evening. My name is Marlies Richter. Um, I'm playing for Gold Ultimate in South Africa. Um, I'm representing the South Africa Flying Disc Association, and I also serve on the Women in Sports Commission at WIPDIP. Thank you all for joining. So my, my first question is, is kind of a round table. I just want to get an update. What, what's happening on the spirit front back home for you? Something that maybe is different or, uh, or the same from what you see here at international events or in Europe, North America, for example? Okay, well, I'll go first. Um, I think right now in New Zealand, we've got um, an explosion in youth, which is fantastic. Um, and a big challenge for us is to educate our young athletes in a, what the spirit of the game means um, and how that's different in subtle ways from just straight sportsmanship that we, have, that we see in other sports. Um, I think the most unique thing about Ultimate right now is that it's a self-refereed sport and to communicate that to our young athletes is really important and it's a big challenge for us. In China, um, Ultimate is relatively a new sport and is growing very quickly. And while spirit is advocated, unfortunately, it's kind of become secondary to the competitiveness. And part of the challenge is, is because a lot of players don't fully understand all the rules. And spirit is not strictly, it's quite nebulous. And so there isn't a consistent criteria for what spirit actually means. So as new teams are being developed, there isn't a consistent criteria for judging spirit. In South Africa, Ultimate is a growing sport, a very exciting one. Um, and I think different regions in South Africa apply different de definitions of spirit of the game. Um, often spirit of the game is seen as team spirit or the team who wins the party. And in some tournaments, spirit of the game is seen as a consolation prize that you give to the losing team in the hope that they would come back to the tournament the next year. So we're trying to harmonize the definition and understanding of spirit of the game across regions um, and to imbue a sense of responsibility for spirit of the game. I think also in that ultimate's becoming more competitive in South Africa, um, it's important that the different regions harmonize that definition. That's great. Thanks for, for sharing that update. And, and a few of you touched on some of the challenges that you're experiencing. What's being done at the local or national level to combat some of those things that you mentioned? Um, I think um, at the national level, it's been somewhat organic. Um, and I want to congratulate WIFTF on having this kind of forum because I think it's providing some valuable tools to address this kind of thing. Um, to uh, pick up on one of the points that was made. Um, at the competitive level, I think for a few years, spirit just dropped right off. Um, we weren't so worried about it. It was just something that was there for social tournaments. But in more recent years, um, our competitive teams just kind of organically have recognized that what makes Ultimate unique is spirit of the game and that we want to play hard but also play to the rules. So I think there's, um, there's a big challenge in the leadership of all of our teams to really take spirit on board. Um, and it's, 
we can provide resources from a top-down approach, but I really, I think the challenge is for leaders at the local level, at the team level, at the coach level, to explain and enforce what spirit is. Thanks, Sharif. Um, I think in China, um, agreeing with what Sharif is saying, it should come down, come from a top-down level to encourage spirit across the board, but we haven't really reached that point in China where we can really do that because China, uh, in China, the sport is still growing so fast and new players always wanted to introduce them to their new, new cities or to the new university. So there isn't really that consistent message that everyone should be bringing spirit back to where they're building you know, the, the teams. So you know, it's kind of our duty as part of the Ultimate Association China to, to, to bring that message to everyone, but we focus more on building the skills and fundamentals of all the players first. Well, hopefully at the next Spirit of the Game conference, we can hear more about what's been happening there. In South Africa, what we did this year is before nationals, we asked people to come the night before and to talk about what spirit of the game means to them. And for me, that was very, um, a very encouraging um, presentation or a discussion because people could come and talk about something that they felt very passionate about. And it was great to see um, how different players valued spirit of the game. With that nationals, we also encouraged captains to delegate some of their tasks in South Africa team captains take up a whole role, a whole variety of roles, including team administration, fitness, coaching, getting one, everyone up in the morning to be at the tournament on time, strategy, and inevitably spirit of the game would, um, would fall down the priority list. So we've instituted, a, we've encouraged teams to elect or to nominate a spirit captain that spirit captain has to introduce him or herself to the other spirit captain in the game um, before the game starts um, and is responsible for submitting the spirit of the game score sheets um, to the spirit of the game committee um, that forms part of the tournament organizing committee. If there, as in the UK, if there's a after a day of playing, if there's a particularly low spirit of the, of the game score from a team, the spirit of the game committee might go and have a word with the spirit captain and say, um, is there something bothering your team? Is there something we can help with? And we found that for the first time we had 100% return on scores um, and that people valued the data that was submitted because they knew that it was something that um, everyone that submitted and the final score was, was a true reflection of what happened during that tournament. That I think has, has built um, people's valuing of spirit of the game. Great. Thanks, Marlies. So for my final question, um, get a little bit more specific. Thinking about this tournament we have here or you're tapping into your other international experiences, what, uh, what kind of unique perspectives does the local ultimate community from New Zealand, China, or South Africa bring uh, that's, that's maybe different than what you're seeing from other countries? And I, I was wearing lederhosen earlier today, so I could thank the Austrian team for that. Please, share with the group. Well, I think um, Worlds is always um, a really fun opportunity to um, see how other teams approach Spirit. Um, and I think actually, in many ways, key to Spirit is the Spirit Circle. Um, and it was a revelation for me the first time that I played in the US and then Canada that Spirit Circles um, are not widely used and I think um, they are really key because at the end of the match no matter how um, uh, good or badly it went in terms of spirit you stand around in a circle and you have to look your teammates in the eye and you have to look your opposition in the eye and you'll have to come to terms with how that went um, and if it's been really bad you know it and you get to discuss it and I think that's um, an extremely valuable thing and I'm in New Zealand, um, that's one thing that we focus on, that at both the social, at the schools, um, and at the competitive level, there's always a spirit circle. There's always time for a spirit circle after a match. And I think um, that's kind of what brings it all together. Um, and it's a really valuable tool for bringing especially young players into the, um, the sort of the ethos of spirit of the game. 
I think that's a bit of a tough question for us to answer in China currently, given that we haven't really been encouraging spur as much as we want. Um, part of the challenge is for us is that as a country in, in China, most young um, teenagers aren't encouraged to play sports growing up. So the idea of sportsmanship to start with isn't even really there. People aren't really internalizing what sportsmanship is. So when you add an additional la level of um, spirit of the game, you know, self-officiating, and a lot of people are coming in at a later age playing, having played an officiated sport such as basketball or soccer, the idea of self refereeing, refereeing is an additional difficulty to current really implement across the board. I mean, we have spirit circles, for example, after games, but again, it's not like consistent. Some tournaments will have it, some tournaments will not have it, some teams will do it when they have enough time in between games, but not. And so I think coming to this conference and being part of the panelists, I personally have a lot of lessons learned that I can take back to China and start uh, thinking action points. Great, thank you. Uh, I play in the same team as Ryan, and I can say that our game against Austria was a lot of fun. I've never seen Ryan in a leather horsen, and the Austrian team showed us how to do an Austrian traditional dance, which was very um, fun, even though we were very sweaty. Um, and I think for me, that was one component of spirit of the game, and it was fun. Um, and we had a spirit circle, what we in South Africa call a huddle, where after a game, it doesn't matter if you play league, whether sometimes even during pickup, um, definitely during our bigger tournaments, we have a huddle afterwards. Um, and it was interesting for me to learn from this conference that there's some countries who don't do it as a, as a matter of course. Um, I think in South Africa, perhaps, um, it's not something that is unique, but I think something that we are striving towards is to make the conversation in the spirit huddle or in the spirit circle afterwards really constructive and a learning experience, not just a, um, a practice where you say nice things about the opponents, but that you really manage to raise issues of conflict or issues that were difficult during the game, that you raise it in that forum and where it gets dealt with constructively rather than that the conflict stays there. And I'm hoping that's something that we'll be able to work on, um, saying the difficult things as well. All right. That, that concludes this panel, but I'd like to have the audience join me in thanking them for taking the time to share their thoughts with us today.